Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. We've spoken about recently about finding meaning. I find myself asking a lot, what does that look like in 5D? Because in 3D, it was measured by love as in our relationship status, how many, you know, how many people we screwed, etc. cetera. <laughs> um, success, you oh, know, wow. like money, job. Assuming or trying to assign meaning to life it actually becomes pointless. And again, it becomes this external thing. It also this just thing, becomes mental masturbation, right? It really does. And this, like, it becomes, oh, I went here for this reason to do this. It and, becomes the thing we cling to. Well, you know, I mean, when you're talking about this, I'm definitely thinking about how I turned this work into my meaning for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was fucking toxic because mm. everything that happened in my personal life, I was like, oh, that happened because I was learning this episode or writing this chapter mm. or whatever else. And I linked the two so much mm. that I transferred the dissatisfaction I had on my personal life onto the work Mm -hmm. I made the work have to carry far greater a load than Mm. it really should right it was my work it was what I did for fun it brought me joy but at the same time it wasn't everything yeah but I realized that actually there needed to be some quite for me anyway quite firm boundaries Mm -hmm. for myself between you know at the end of the day I love what I do And that's amazing because there's one part of my life that works really, really well, at least. But it's one part of my life. It's not all of my life. Mm -hmm. And the more I put everything on it, and all the more I hide using it, right? Mm -hmm. Like as well, and I don't mean necessarily I'm just going to stay at home and like edit a podcast episode or write a chapter or I don't know, whatever else. Mm -hmm. I don't mean it like that. I mean, hide from it as in something happens and I try and find meaning in it. So then to then ascribe that meaning to my work. Okay. These things naturally harmoniously fit or they don't. And me trying to force stuff just makes me resent fucking everything and everyone. Hmm. And it's really dangerous because as much as I love my work, which is effectively my purpose, it's how I serve, right? Mm-hmm. As I said in the last episode, I'm here for more than that. Yeah, I'm here to be happy. I'm here for everything in my world to echo back that light. Yeah. Not just how I serve. I serve the collective in this way, Mm -hmm. but I also serve the collective by being another happy person in it Mm. because that spreads more joy, happiness, etc. I don't think that this work is enough to give me meaning, nor would I want it to. And I know that that sounds like quite a big statement to say on a podcast, but I'm serious. (laughs) I'm not here. Well, at least you're honest. I'm not here to be Liz's work wife. I'm not here to be Karma's, you know... Poster child. Yeah, I'm not exactly. Yeah. I'm not here to be Karma's poster child. I'm not even here to be Oneness's poster child. I'm not here to be anything other than fucking happy. Mm-hmm. And doing this work brings me happiness because I get to like chat and learn and process and do all these really fun things with it. But it's not fucking everything. I mean, to be honest, that wasn't always fun. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. But I think a lot of why it wasn't fun is because I made it. It was necessary because... You know, there is like, there are always going to be blurred boundaries between work and life. There just is, right? Like, mm-hmm. and especially when this work involves my life, I, right? I mean, it's very personal. It's very personal. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's everything. Yeah. And I would never want it to be everything because for so long it was my everything and I wasn't very fucking happy. Mm-hmm. And if I had to choose hand on heart tomorrow between my happiness mm-hmm. and anything else, yeah, in terms of the things that are in my life, my happiness is always going to win. Yeah. But ironically, and kind of bringing it back to the reanimation episode just we had last in the last episode, mm-hmm. because this is part of my happiness, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. It's still part of my purpose. It's still part of my happiness. So it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm very clear about that. Yeah. But I also can see what my priority is, yeah. what my, what I'm determined to create for myself. And that isn't a huge empire with an unhappy founder at the top of it. Mm-hmm. At all. It's a fucking joyful life that involves all these things that make me excited to get up in the morning. When you say that, you're allowing for a certain evolution of your purpose, of your life, of yourself, and even of your happiness by not attaching any significance or sort of, or ascribing meaning to something. And because when you do, you don't allow something to move forward. Things move forward and find their place. They don't always necessarily go. Like we've got so many outdated ideas when it comes to endings and finishings and doing new things. One thing doesn't have to necessarily replace the next. Mm. Relationships can evolve and get better. 
you know, there are so many, there's another side of the coin that we don't allow ourselves access to because we've spent so long in our comma. Purpose is still very significant. Like, don't get us wrong. We have banged on about purpose for so many seasons. There's no way we're going to get to one episode in season nine and be like, fuck purpose. <laughs> we're done. Yeah. Well, purpose you is just live- your divine expression. So that's never going to go anywhere. Yeah. It's how you serve the collective through your div- most divine expression. Right. And it does get us through. It gets us out of our karma. Like it really helps us. It, it gives us a focal point. Right. But also just following your heart, I guess you, or your soul, whatever you want to call it, gets yeah. you out of everything. Exactly. Giving yourself permission to be exactly. happy effectively. And, and effectively, like when we're finished with our destiny, we set out on the larger part of our fate. Again, it still becomes the beacon for us, right? It like helps us traverse those fate lines in a way in which we can feel a bit more settled or balanced. Yeah. Yeah. As we move along. So we're less likely to fall over or we're less likely to kind of get stuck in too many other loops. But we are more than our purpose, right? Further... And our fate we go, our purpose starts to take on another hue, okay. which is a really interesting word that they used, I'm right? into this. As in it doesn't change completely. It just takes on another hue. Okay. Like another layer, if you will. So it continues to be the way in which we serve, but it is not the end all be all of our fate. As in it's not really what's going to get us to the other, like the unwritten parts of our fate. Okay. Yeah. How cool is that? Okay. And what is that? And that's because because in the previous episode when we talked about reanimation, we talked about divine consciousness, as in I am the divine, right? And I have all the gifts of the divine and blah, blah. We are here then for a multitude of reasons, which is we are here to experience everything that life on earth has to offer as we are the divine. Not okay? just the painful shit, but like the right? yummiest chocolate cake and like the best orgasm. Yeah, the most amazing whatever, I don't know, visiting the most beautiful place on earth and I don't know, whatever bucket list things one creates for themselves. Okay, fun. Yeah. And that's part of our fate. Yeah. What is within our fate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May not be within my fate to go bungee jumping, but somebody else's fate might. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's what I mean. So it's really daring. But what I'm saying is that that's all within our fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I had no idea. No, it's super cool. I didn't really grasp that either. I kind of felt that was more choice shit. Yeah, I thought it was just like a what ifs thing. I didn't, I thought like, yeah, I basically thought our fate was purpose, right? So like, I'm going to do this book and then I'm going to write this thing and I'm going to do this. I thought it was just that. To be fair, they set it up like that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's not our fault. No, it's not. But why did they set it up like that? Because when we're transitioning from 3D to 5D, it can be very overwhelming to be presented with so many choices that as long as you have your purpose, that's really what's going to see you through. So I guess it's a bit like what we were talking in the previous episode of like just shutting down. Like when I was saying how I felt really overwhelmed because I could see so much. Yeah. And effectively, I just felt myself shut down. Yeah. I mean, purpose can feel like more than enough for a lot of people. Yeah. But now it doesn't feel like enough at all. Right. That's yeah. exactly what You're I was like, saying. You're like, I'm fucking bored. Yeah. 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 You're like, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. But it's not. But it also doesn't. Because so it ceases to be fulfilling if we don't have all the extra. And that's the magic part. So it's funny. Like we're talking about fate a lot. Yeah. There's always an element of magic in each episode. There's like a magic point, And that's your magic point is what's the yummy bit that I can add to my life that's going to fit my life. That's going to be just, I mean, I don't want to call it an essential, but it is. That joy is an essential part 100%. of our life. Also, because I just feel my the work is better when I'm happier. Yeah. Like I don't, I've said, I, I mean, we're bored of saying this, like yeah. podcast episodes get droney, yeah. chapters get rewritten. Yeah. You know, I just everything feel like I, I do. Sail, I, yeah. I feel like I sail through my days in a way in which I wouldn't if I didn't have that extra. Yeah. Time moves differently. Everything yeah. gets paced differently. You're yeah. present in a way that you are unable to be present otherwise. But so there's so all that stuff is also in our fate, all the cool stuff. When we're really dealing with our fate in this particular arena, it is much more about our evolution. So what lies beyond our purpose is what will get us to the next area of our fate, Mm. right? And now, when we think about our fate, you can't section off your fate, right? The lines are such that everything is intertwined. So you can't just be like, oh, the first 25% of my fate is purpose. You know, everything bleeds through. Everything carries through. So there's no, like, cutting it or portioning it off. It just is. It's You're all of it, right? And then the extra to come that you write. Hopefully you'll get there. But what lies beyond all of that in that next area of, of our fate, as in, 
All right, I fulfilled a great deal of my purpose. I'm happy. You know, it's all good. It's all great. It's all unfolding. I'm in total flow and, you know, I can reanimate. Maybe I've managed a quantum leap, etc. is what we call creatorship. So full creatorship. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, pause, rewind. <laughs> so there's something above all of the things we've done. So there's some, this, this is above reanimation and quantum It's not leaping. above, it's just something else. Okay, so something else. We're introducing I mean, something else because you really Reanimation like, is, I know, yeah. didn't I? I just, I was like, I'm just going to slip this one in and see if she notices. See? No, nothing is more powerful than reanimation. Nothing. Mm-mm. Not even quantum leaping. So, so creatorship. Yeah, full creatorship. Yay. So not only are you in service to the collective, right, which is one's purpose, but to the greater whole of humanity. I mean, how How is that different? Because you have a greater reach. I'm confused. The collective is all of humanity. No, it's not. What is it? Not necessarily. It will just be whomever you can influence in your immediate reach. Sorry, I've never known this before. (laughs) I mean, not everybody is like in service to the whole of humanity. Who has that level of influence? I just assume. So it's not just your collective. So example, right now, our collective could just be... The listeners of this podcast. Yes. Hello okay. and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Made it cringe. <laughs> Shut up. But the greater whole of humanity is wider than the people that we can directly influence in that way. Precisely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to achieve this means not only do you have a certain level of mastery over your purpose, right? Which is effectively the clear map of your service. So... In that respect, it's a bit like what you've experienced where it's just in a constant state of unfolding. Yeah, you do a podcast, you do a book, you do a podcast, you do a book. Okay, make that sound a little bit more exciting. No, but it's unfolding. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. I love, I like, all three, all four, five, whatever, however many elements we have to our work. Yeah. Whenever it's time for it, I enjoy it. When you do this, you also have to have a willingness to step into the larger container of your own power. What does that mean? So... It means that you're willing to take on greater responsibility and ownership for your work. So you know that more people will be consuming it. Yeah. And so you give, you know, and you take the responsibility of that. Yeah. So I'll give this one example and let me see if I can, because it just popped into my mind. And when I do this, mind you, this is not me talking smack. This is not me being critical. It's just an observation, right? But this is the one that just popped into my mind and I'm going to run with it. So I did one of Doreen Virtue's seminars many, many years ago, sometime in the early 2000s. And she was already, I guess, big by then. She'd already written a a lot of books and and was really good at selling her books at these seminars. And all of her practitioners were there. And they weren't all, they were very clicky and weird, right? And again, no judgment. It was just observation. I was just there because I was always really clear that I was going to do soul memory. This was not something I was totally interested in. But why not? My friend really wanted to do it. It was a nice weekend. But I remember sort of watching her and listening to her at some point when she was on stage. Because mind you, she wasn't there a lot. She would just kind of appear like once a day. Oh, really? A little bit. She wasn't necessarily teaching everything. She'd kind of give a little bit. Because she was was like sharing how to like do mediumship and stuff. She brought out James von Prague, who is this quite a well-known medium. And he talked about what it took for him to develop his mediumship skills. But I remember when she introduced him. And she said, yeah, and we both drive the same car as in a Mercedes convertible. She made a rather big deal about that. And I remember thinking, if you think that that's a valid point worth making, you're really targeting a different audience than you need to be for your purpose, right? Because here you are talking about connecting people. What seems to matter is the material gain. And that's where I really thought that there's a lack of ownership and responsibility for somebody who had such a large mission. And when you do that is when things can start to get corrupted. That's all I'm going to say about that. (laughs) Was that really much of a story? Not really. Because when we were talking about reaching the greater whole of humanity, she was somebody who had an incredible reach. She's somebody who got there. She got there before a lot of other people did. Given that fate. Oh, absolutely. Fate and mission. I mean, she was definitely mission, but she squandered it. While I've had friends say, well, it's just an experience. You know, everybody goes through stuff, but I could see it already being set up for that. 
that she was somebody who was never going to be able to fully hold on to her gifts. And I know that it's because she feels like Jesus told her to. You know, she was in church and she had a vision of Jesus. And now all she wants to do is just talk about how important Jesus is. And she's disavowed everything that she's ever created. So when you disavow your work, you're denying your being. And no one who denies their being could ever be a teacher, which is really a shame because she had a lot to offer. The point was never about necessarily her cards or her books, but she offered connection. And that's tremendous. And she could still do that in in a different way. Yes, but she cannot do that because she's completely erased so much. Again, when I when I talk about Doreen and why I why I've some somehow given permission to talk about her today, it's the cautionary tale. It wasn't a be careful, oh no, being corrupted when you have this much power. It's it's still quite easy because well, not only is the dark quite seductive. But our world is very seductive, unless you are fully cemented in your faith. And then you get all the cool seductive things anyway. Yeah, exactly. That really do but line up that dog. what you were talking block. about just now, this portion retail business, that, that, that feels quite 3D. Is that possible in 5D? It is possible in 5D. How do you make sure you don't? Not in a fearful way, just what is it? Are you just really, you have to be able to really take responsibility and ownership of your work. Yes, completely. And humility. Humility is key. And it's not just about knowing that you don't know everything. It's also about always remembering that you are here to serve. The collective. Yeah. And the greater whole of humanity in this case. Which I thought was the collective up until about six minutes ago. (laughs) We've talked about how, you know, you're not going to backslide, etc. There's also insecurities. There's also choices we make. We can't forget that we still live in a rather 3D world. And also when you said like there's like the beginning of 5D when you're kind of in hell and then there's after that where you're kind of living a bit and you're in your purpose. Yeah. And then there seems to be after that where you go through like that loss period for a bit and then you're in a cemented place. Yeah. There is still growth and evolution in 5D. It's not like you're in 5D, gates open, woohoo, party times. Like yes and no. Yeah. Like actually you have yeah, to create that. When 5D looks bleak. Yeah. yeah. When you become and you step into that larger container, because you recognize that you can, you're can, you here to serve the greater whole of humanity and that you have that reach, you have that knowledge, you have that faith. You know that that's what you're here for, right? It's written in your fate. The one other essential component to cementing your footing in 5D with all of that in place is love. Yay! <laughs> like, yeah, love. It's, it's true, though, but it makes sense because it's, it's kindness. It's all the things. Right. And love is light. It's full light and you're running all that light. That's why in these early years of 5D, the support systems will be really important. But I guess it makes sense because love is but joy, love. It's, it's, it's how we connect to others. It's how we connect yeah. to our divinity. It reminds exactly. us all the source. And it love. grounds us. When we experience oh gosh, it in our yeah. daily lives, it grounds us. And that's what matters. Because when we are grounded, we are less likely to fall off our fate lines, mm. right? So it's still possible to fall off your fate lines at any point? Um, Everything's possible. Yeah, always. but unlikely. Yeah, less likely, but can always. You know, there's. it doesn't take much sometimes, you know. Cause to, like, it's like the image they just gave was just like the little feather and you fall over. It can be something. It just depends on where you're at. You know, as we talk about this. And we come into 5D and our work in 5D from a very organic place because, you know, we, we've allowed this unfolding. We figured it out as we went along. So, you know, the roadmap is one that it just seems to like show itself. And we just, we bumble. We have bumbled our way through this and we own that. Right? Yeah, yeah. But that's how I've bumbled through my whole career. So I I'm mean, like, oh, this is usual for me. That is my life. <laughs> in a nutshell. But I can imagine someone else who's not like this to find that particularly difficult exactly exactly so what do they do maybe they want to fall back into old habits maybe like you said maybe old thought patterns kind of creep in right sometimes it doesn't take much to push somebody over an edge in which they were already kind of teetering but if you're in higher consciousness surely your higher self is like yeah 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 you want to think that but it is always important for us to cover all the ground because we're not going to sell this like as if it's so easy it'll never happen to say that would just be irresponsible. If it does, what do you do? If you just happened by chance to pick up this episode of this podcast mm-hmm. and this is you, what do you say to them? Well, three things. One, get back to your purpose because your purpose will ground you and that is a huge source of your divinity. Secondly, refocus your relationships. 
Because more than likely, it's a toxic or dysfunctional relationship that's completely thrown you. Usually it's what allows people to get thrown off, Mm -hmm. you know, is the attachment to relationship. I would rather have that than live out my purpose. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds familiar. I know. (laughs) You said it, not me. (laughs) Sounds sounds pointed. (laughs) I'd rather have both. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's about having both. And then the third thing is, okay, and this is going to sound like a little bit of a punt, but we'll explain this. Reevaluate your choices. Okay. Because something, so say it wasn't a relationship. I mean, it could have been, whatever, still a choice. But there was a point along the line in which you chose something and you need to go and choose differently. You need to go back to, the, not necessarily back in time, but you need to trace those steps because you made a choice somewhere. But then, and I've experienced that exactly mm-hmm. in many ways, yeah. but actually going back and unraveling that to end it up bringing in from the last episode ended up bringing in a layer of something I hadn't seen before or okay. I wasn't maybe ready to face. Oh, cool. Right? Okay. And then in doing that, I could have compassion for every choice I'd made because yeah. I was like, oh, well, I didn't know any better, but now I do. Yeah. So then I was able to make different choices going forward. But it was also uncovering something that I hadn't seen before yeah. and allowed me to then heal so much that I hadn't realized I could heal, hmm. to be honest. Yeah. So it was. So sometimes, you know, like the one thing I would say to all of that is not like, bad dog you've done you know what I mean it's just there is a reason go back and find that reason and then actually you'll you'll be better for it absolutely there's no judgment around that but it's a everything can be addressed everything can be fixed we cannot forget the fact that we have the power to address everything that ails us yeah if we're willing to take responsibility so it is sometimes just as simple as where was the choice that you made and can you do it differently? Then actually going forward, I will naturally make different choices mm-hmm. because I'm not coming from that space anymore. Right. So in the end, it, it is all for your happiness. It is. Even if you fall off a fate line mm-hmm. because then you get back on it and you can go faster through it, right? And smoother mm-hmm. through it because there's even less baggage holding you back. So as of this recording, few, if any, are actually doing this. So that's how future telling this this particular subject is in yeah. terms of full creatorship it makes sense if the fear of doing this well you have to be in higher consciousness yeah you have to have like so that means no ego no right. karma no everything exactly and on top of that you must have you have to have already gone through the little hell portion maybe where you're kind of you, well not everybody goes through exactly hell. maybe that's why i said yeah. maybe and also maybe you know you've, you're in your purpose for a bit and you know, like it's like you know step six or seven of the 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 fate traversing where you add this thing to your arsenal yes exactly. so it's it makes sense that it's not going to be like immediately because how many people are doing that right yeah i mean and who has it modeled for them like the younger generations don't but we really even if they're in 5d and we have all the things yeah no i mean i don't even know what full creatorship even means i know i was like we haven't even fully explained it and um i feel i feel like we just i mean we've learned a lot today but we still haven't learned what full creatorship is probably why you just slipped it in Yeah, exactly, because there's no definition, really. Anyway, continue. Yeah, but it requires us to be fully ready for a life that's entirely unknown. So effectively, what full creatorship is... And that doesn't mean like sitting on an island. It just means... No, we're just literally creating everything as we go along. That's what full creatorship is. Literally creating everything as we go along. Yeah. So it's like creating the lily pad and then jumping on it, and then creating the next lily pad and then jumping on it. That image works. Okay. Yeah. But obviously, it doesn't mean you're jumping along it like, and every time you jump onto the next lily pad, you lose all the people in your life and then you move on to the next one. Let's just make that clear because I'm sure some people out there, aka me, would be thinking, oh, wait a second, if we're fully creating our lives and you have to be used to the unknown, it means you have to blank slate your life every single time. That's not what we mean. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Just wanted to double check. So you're, I mean, not only are you really living as the divine in body, but you're, exer- you're exercising that complete divinity from a place where you're you're going to know that everything will always be well, just like you said. Yeah. You're not having to blank slate every time. Everything's going to be a natural evolution. Everything but always feels natural. But you're just doing it from that that most divine place. And so I can I can understand why it is really difficult to get to this space. Like like you said, I mean, it's all well and good. You have reanimation. You have quantum leaping. You're you're living your fate. Like. So and probably most people are doing all these things without knowing that they have catchy names. I mean, really, no one's doing it. But anyway, like, 
you have your purpose. Everything is going swimmingly well. It's just we have to throw one more thing into the pot. Like, oh, why don't you consider full creatorship? Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's where you get into the unwritten parts of your fate. That's really important of why this is an episode 12 is because what you're going to start to realize is how that's how your new physical world will manifest. If you're serving the whole of humanity, when you say your physical world, you mean earth. Yeah. You don't mean like my home. No, it's everything. Yeah. It's that and more because again, that's the larger container, right? Okay. The whole of humanity. So if you are changing your physical reality, oh, that's your magic. You're free to desire whatever you want, and then you're free to create it afterwards. Exactly. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.